All right, what's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the message, Jerry. We're back with another video. This one's going to be about seven signs. God does not want you to give up on someone. In a couple of days, probably like in two days or maybe even tomorrow, you'll see me make a video of signs that God does want you to give up on somebody. But anyways, let's go. Let's go. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. First sign, none of this is in order, but the first sign you want to look for, if you want to see, if you want to keep somebody, is um, I look for the sign when it comes to friendships, relationships, anybody I deal with, is is a person humble, okay? This is the number one thing, okay? I don't like to deal with people who are prideful, arrogant, self-righteous, none of that. So um, throughout the Bible over and over again, it talks about how there's uh, the meek shall inherit the earth, you know, the humble uh, will inherit the blessing, this and that. So this is who I like to surround myself with. People who are humble, people who aren't like trying to show off and flex, you know, uh, these are the people who God is the closest to, okay? That says in the Bible that God gives grace to the humble and he resists the proud. So that's the number one sign that you don't want to give up to somebody. Now, there's also people who have like a fake humility. So you got to use your discernment and, you know, see if the person is genuine. Because remember, being humble, being meek is a spirit. Okay, remember, we don't deal with people. We don't deal with individuals. We're dealing with spirits in the person. Some people have a righteous spirit, you know, being a meek, that's a righteous spirit, you know. And there's also some people who have unclean spirits, demonic spirits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, so use your discernment to see if that person is um has the, the the good spirit in them all right so number two is when someone makes some mistakes and did you wrong okay they own up to it take accountability because what a lot of people like to do is they like to gaslight all right and gaslighting is a form of manipulation is a form of witchcraft okay so this is also linked to being humble people who are humble they don't gaslight they own up to something if they did you wrong or if they just you know maybe did something wrong to god you know they sinned or something right they own up to it. They either repent of their sin, okay? They, it leads to all God, depending on what it is, not always going to lead to godly sorrow, but, you know, it usually it's a godly sorrow because godly sorrow leads to repentance. Talks about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, okay? So always keep this in mind when you're dealing with an individual, guys. I trust me. I wish I would have known this earlier, okay? But when someone makes some mistakes and did you wrong, they own up to it, guys. They take accountability. They don't blame you. They don't look to gaslight the situation, to manipulate the situation, they blame, you know, themselves and whether it was towards God or towards you or towards the individual, you know, they'll own up to it and, you know, they won't try to manipulate. This is also, guys, like I said, this is also being humble, guys, and all links, everything I'm about to say all links to being humble. That's why I put that number one, okay? So, um, yeah, godly sorrow works to repentance and the, the sorrow of the world works to death, okay? Talks about that in that scripture right there. All right, number three. Is their actions match the words, okay? A lot of people give you a good talk, especially you woman. You got to be very careful. Remember, Eve was deceived by the serpent, deceived by the snake, a.k.a. the devil. Devil gave her a good talk. So just because someone's giving you a good talk, it doesn't really matter too much. You got to look at the spirit behind the individual, okay? So the actions match their words, okay? Actions is good fruits, okay? So we've seen how, uh, you know, the Bible talks about the fruits of the spirit, which I'm going to talk about in the next one. But a lot of people could give you good words. They could give you a smooth talk, a smooth saying. A lot of people fall for, for the manipulation, okay? So just because someone's giving you good words, we got to back it up by the actions. You know, the, what, what fruits are they bearing, whether it's a friendship, fam, even a family member, co-worker, or a relationship. So always keep that in mind, man. They have the, act, the, the words are back, backed up with the actions. Because a lot of people, guys, I see it all the time, especially a lot of you men, too. You know, the, the woman's act, a woman's words, you know, you got to match the actions. What are the actions showing? You know, they could say, oh, I love you. I love you, blah, blah, blah. But the actions ain't, you know, ain't matching it. She's lying to you. She's cheating on you, manipulating you, stuff like that. So that's not true love. You know, those are just good words. And a lot of people fall for the manipulation, fall for the seducing spirits. All right. So there's a lot of people out here, guys, who give you a good talk, give you a good word. Even a lot of these, some of these pastors who give you a good word, but they're really wolves in sheep clothing. Okay, so remember, you can't, and when it comes to fruits, good fruits, is you can't fake your fruits. You can't GMO it. You can't You can't do that. You know, when someone's truly spiritual, led by the Holy Spirit, we could see individuals before they even talk, before they even speak. We see what we're dealing with, all right? Number four is the person portrays the fruits of the Spirit, which goes on with number three, okay? Fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace kindness 
uh, meekness, so being humble. All right, uh, pac uh, patience or self-control, just put patience. Uh, I think it's gentleness too. I think I'm missing one, okay? But it talks about that in that Bible verse right there in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, 23. Love, joy, peace. This is the, uh, a key thing you do want to deal with, guys. Remember, peace, someone who gives, who brings peace. Someone's not bringing chaos. Every time you're around that individual, it's no peace. Oh, man, that's a sign from God that you have to let that person go. That's going to be like a little bonus. I'm going to show you guys in my next video. All right, the person don't bring no peace. The person doesn't have no love in their heart. Okay, they don't want to see you grow. They don't want to, whenever you're elevating, leveling up, they don't want, they're not happy for you. Okay, they're not bringing joy, joy in your life. They're not patient. Uh, they don't have no self-control. They're not humble. Okay, these are the signs you got to all look out for. Okay, because remember, God's always showing us. The thing is, we ain't paying attention. God always shows us who, who to keep in our life, who to let go. Always. If you have the Holy Spirit, it always lets you know. The thing is, people don't like to listen. And then you get in, the, in a situation what they call a situation ship, where you should never got into the first place, and that's all because you were ignoring the signs. It was all because you try to change the, change the individual, knowing that knowing you know well that person didn't want to be changed. So always keep that in mind, man. The person portrays the fruits of the spirit. All right, remember, we got to be spiritual when we're dealing with people. We're not dealing with we're not dealing with people. We're dealing with spirits. Number five is when you and someone both have issues. Or things you have to work on because everybody has something you got to work on everybody has no one is perfect no one is without fault or without sin so we all do we have to humble ourselves and admit that all right both parties work together to fix and get better okay there's a bible verse in ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12 it talks about two is better than one uh and this is not just relationships that could be in anything in life it's always better to have a partner someone who's helping you side by side Y'all working together because two is better than one because they have a great reward for their work, for their labor, okay? So always keep this in mind. I know you may see me preach on being isolation, you know, be, you know, being to yourself a little bit, but I don't preach on that being isolated forever. That's always just seasons, and sometimes God puts you into that season. But best believe, it's always good to have a friend. There's a friend that sits closer than a brother, uh, or maybe you have family member, brother or sister, or, you know, for those who are in relationships or marriages, it's always good to have someone in company, you know, because think about the times where you didn't have that person. You were lonely. Maybe you were, you know, depressed or you felt some type of way. Now that you have someone, always be happy about that. So always remember, guys, when you have issues, when both of you guys have issues together, right, you you guys work on it to fix it. And remember, that aligns with actions. So you're not just saying, oh, I got to fix this with your words. That person, or maybe even you, is backing that up with actions because you could fool people, but you can't fool the most high. You cannot fool God. Okay, you can fool a whole bunch of people, but you're only playing yourself when you're doing that. Because like I said, you can't fool God. You're only wasting your time. So don't waste your time and be serious. Be committed to this walk. Because best believe, if you're doing the right thing, you're bearing good fruits, you're going to reap a good reward, a good harvest. Okay, it takes time being patient. Okay, that's also a fruit of the Spirit. All right, so yeah, remember that, guys. Two is better than one. All right, number six is, and this is what people got to know this, man. You got to know this. All right, the Holy Spirit will always reveal to you who to keep and who to let go, okay? Um, the Holy Spirit will always reveals you now sometimes in life, um, the, God will allow certain people who are not right for us in our life. Like even uh, Judas and Jesus, right? Judas was a disciple of, of Jesus and look what happened. So sometimes God allows it. God allows the devil, you know, it's just to teach you a lesson, okay? But before Judas betrayed him, God showed him, the Father showed him he was gonna betray him. Yep, so best believe Sometimes it's all part of the plan. It's all, you know, Judas is all part of the plan. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, the Holy Spirit will always reveal to you things. The Holy Spirit revealed to Jesus, Yahshua, that he was about to be betrayed. And it showed him who it was. You know, they, when they were having supper, they all looked around, you know, who is it, who is it? And Judas didn't know that the Messiah, already, he already knew. Jesus already knew. Okay, so always keep that in mind. The Holy Spirit will always reveal to you who to keep and who to get let go. And I put right here, which is important, is to be obedient, okay, and be wise. The Bible says to be wise as a serpent and to be harmless as a dove. But even said, you know, a lot of people tell you guys to, you know, trust in your heart, follow your heart. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he who trusts in his heart is a fool, okay? But whoever walks, uh, whoever walks wisely, you know, shall be delivered, okay? So this Bible verses over and over, Proverbs chapter 26, 20, sorry, chapter 28, verse 26, Okay, it says over and over, he who trusts in his heart is a fool. So you don't want to trust in your heart. 
Your heart is deceitful. Your heart is wicked. Okay, but the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, will lead. Will, you know, wants you to be led by peace. But you gotta be obedient. You gotta obey it, and you gotta be wise. Okay, a lot of people they like to play both sides. You know, and just always understand there's a consequence to our, our actions that we do. Okay, the actions that we we take in life, whether it's good or bad, has a consequence. Now, it's not always bad. It could be good. Like you know what people call karma, the Bible calls reaping what is sowed. So let's say, for instance, you want to do a good deed by giving to the poor, giving to those who are less fortunate. That action that you put out, now it's going to come back to you. A good action is going to come back to you because that's how God works. That's how God created the universe to work. You know, when you do good, good comes back to you. When you do bad, when you do evil, that evil comes back to you too. So it's called reaping what is sown. All right. So the Holy Spirit will always reveal to you who to keep and who to let go. Always be obedient. Okay, and always be wise. All right. So number seven is God will place people to confirm what you already know. So God will place people to confirm what you already know. What I mean by that is um, you'll usually have an elder or someone who's older than you, or someone. It doesn't have to be someone who's always older than you, but someone who's in a position that you, like your mom. You know, someone who you know, your mom, your dad, your uncle, or even it could be your friend. Okay. Um, God will place people to confirm what you already know. So if you know that person is bad for you, someone's going to be letting you know that, hey, did, you know, didn't you know that person's bad? Did you know that what so-and-so did? Blah, 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 blah. Now use your discernment because sometimes when people, sometimes people are being used by the enemy. You know, sometimes, you know, God does want you to place, you know, you two together, you know, and there's the enemy that's trying to separate y'all. So use discernment. Okay. And remember, like I said, guys, you, the actions, the fruits, you got to pay attention. Use your discernment. Okay. So always use your discernment, but God will definitely... Tell, we use people to warn you about such and such, you know, so and so. We'll always warn you. So take heed to the warnings, all right? So these are the seven signs God does not want you to give up on somebody. Like I said, guys, I'll make a video pretty soon, whether in a day or two, talking about signs that God does um, want you to uh, keep somebody. So if you guys made this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment below, share it, share it, share it with someone who you like. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.